Welcome to worship at First United Methodist Church of Ann Arbor. We're the Power Family. One thing that we really like about our church is the many social justice programs, like Love Thy Neighbor. Well, hello and happy Thanksgiving to all of you. This is our last worship service before Thanksgiving and the last service that's part of our Building a Bigger Table series. So it's delightful to have you worshiping with us. I'm Reverend Nancy Lynn. I'm the senior pastor here at First United Methodist Church of Ann Arbor. With me is Nick Berlanga, and I am the associate pastor here. Let me second the fact that we love that you are worshiping with us, and we'd love to know who you are. So if you take a moment and fill out the attendance sheet, we can see that you worshiped with us. Plus, it'll give you an opportunity to give us some feedback. Also, I want to remind you, if there's something in this service that you've enjoyed, please share it with somebody else. They'd probably enjoy it as well. Nancy, I think you have more information for us. I do. Not only are we celebrating Thanksgiving, but we're already looking forward to Advent, including every year this congregation has had a giving tree where we have purchased gifts for children in our community in need. And this year will be no exception. We are going to have a virtual giving tree. So I ask you at the end of the worship service to keep the video going as we'll be hearing some instructions from Beth Lipton about how we can share all that God has given to us. Now I invite you to take a few moments for reflection as we listen to the prelude.
that we are here today is no accident. Christ himself has has called called us us together. together. The invitation stretches far and wide from From wilderness wilderness and wandering, wandering, from loneliness and and longing, all all have have a place place at the table. The feast is ready and waiting. There There is more more than than enough enough truth to go around. around. Joy Joy is is ours for the taking, and peace peace is poured poured out in abundance. abundance. Our every need has been anticipated. Taste and see that that God God is good. good. Today's scripture reading comes from 2 Corinthians 9, verses 6 to 15. The point is this, the one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance, so that by always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work, as is written. He scatters abroad, he gives to the poor, his righteousness endure forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food, will supply and multiply your seed for sowing, and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You'll be enriched in every way for your great generosity, which will produce thanksgiving to God through us. For the rendering of this ministry not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also overflows with many thanksgivings to God. Through the testing of this ministry, you glorify God by your obedience to confession of the gospel of Christ, and by the generosity of your sharing with them and with all others, while they long for you and pray for you because of the surpassing grace of God that he has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. Hello, how are you doing today? In case you don't know me, I'm Pastor Nick. You know, I was just sitting here um, playing with my grandson, Colton, but he's taking a nap now. We were playing monster trucks Yep, on this little table here. You know, today's a special Sunday in our church, Stewardship Sunday. Um, it's the day when people make pledges. You know what? Let me, let me kind of explain how this is important how this works. So I've got this little table here and Colton and I can play with a few trucks and there's some cool things we can do on this little table. But what if somebody was really nice to us and gave us another and look at we can have more trucks and we can play with more stuff. Wow how cool is that? And then what if other people gave us more tables And now look at all this big space we have and all the trucks that are here. Now how much more fun is this? That's what's happening today. Everybody is getting together and saying, you know what? We can build a bigger table. We can do more things. We can help more people if we all give a little bit. If we all make a promise to help build part of the table. It's an amazing thing, and it makes me happy. You know what? Let's pray. God, we say thank you for our church, and we say thank you for all the people who are willing to help to build a bigger table, to give money and time, to donate so that we can go out and help people in the world. God, we ask that you help us take care of our church, that you keep our family safe, and that you keep us all healthy. Amen. Wow. Well, I'm going to let you go. Look at all these cool trucks. You know, 
while Colton's sleeping, I may have to play with some of these all by myself. They're pretty cool. So, I'll see you next week. Bye. With Thanksgiving quickly approaching, a few days ago I posted on the church's Facebook group and I asked you all, what are you grateful for this year? The answers you gave were so moving to me. Many people mentioned the fundamentals, a warm home, good health, family, friends. Others mentioned being grateful to have jobs particularly jobs which can be done safely from home, and for the internet that's keeping us all connected these days. Some focused on the many people who are working so hard to help our country through this time of crisis. Medical professionals, school teachers, grocery workers, delivery drivers, there's such a long list. And then a number of you spoke of little things like seeing a deer or laughing with a colleague or cuddling with a kitten, spending time outdoors. Our former senior pastor chimed in to say that he's thankful that he's not writing a sermon. And then there were several comments about our life in community. People who are grateful for all those who voted or because the election is over or grateful that there's a group locally that's working on climate action or that people are choosing to stay safe this year. So hopefully we can all be together to celebrate next year. And finally, a lot of people mentioned this church, this community that loves and cares for one another and for the world and the staff that's working so hard to keep us connected. It's such a powerful list. I'm sure more have been added. If you haven't seen it, I encourage you to go to the Facebook group and check it out. It really will warm your heart. For me, it was a reminder of what a generous and grace-filled congregation you are. So I'd just like to add just how thankful I am for you. Thank you for sticking with us through these tough times. Thank you for embracing ways of giving when we're not gathering every weekend. Thank you for the random acts of kindness that you offer to your neighbors. Thank you for watching worship and offering us kind words of encouragement as we struggle with new technology. Thank you for participating in Zoom meetings and classes and discussions and youth group, even a meeting with our local police chief. Thank you for wearing a mask to keep the rest of us safe. And most of all, thank you for believing that even if our buildings are closed, we are the church and we are open for the business of love, compassion, and hope. Today is the last day in our sermon series we've called Building a Bigger Table. It's also the culmination of our annual giving campaign. We've spent the last few weeks together dreaming about how we as a congregation can continue our church's long tradition of care, compassion, outreach, and mission by learning from the saints who have gone before us, reaching out beyond our church walls, and inviting those who are missing at our table to join us. I've used the metaphor of the table for the sermon series because Jesus so often taught, healed, cared for others, and particularly welcomed the stranger and the outcast, all at the table. 
we of course do the same. Think about it. In normal times, all the things that happen in our churches at the table. The first thing that comes to mind for me is that when we gather at the communion table, there is no more sacred moment to me than when I serve bread and juice to one person after another as they come to take communion. We come to the table to remember who Jesus was, what he taught, how following him saves us, mostly from ourselves. We come to the table together in community, sharing the meal that has connected Christians to each other over centuries and miles. We come to the table to offer ourselves and our lives to God and to be nourished by the elements of communion so that we have the strength and the courage to go out into the world and do God's good work. But the communion table isn't the only table where we gather. I'm reminded of the tables of food in the middle of the social hall or in the corner at Greenwood, food we share as we spend time catching up with each other. Tables create a place for holy connection. Of course, there are also the tables in our classrooms. Think of all the generations of children who have learned about faith and the Bible by sitting at our tables. Then there are the tables our youth gather for dinner on Sunday nights. There are the tables we use to organize donations to take on mission trips or to pack sack lunches for those who have breakfast at St. Andrews. There are the tables that our bells rest on when the bell choirs play for us and the changing tables where babies who will soon be baptized get a clean diaper before worship. There are the tables where we sit for an Advent potluck and ornament making each year at Greenwood, and those where our just older youth gather for lunch and a program. Of course, our committee meetings all happen at tables so that we can care for the administration and programs of our church. And there are the tables where we study the Bible together or sit with a small group and share the joys and the challenges of journeying in faith. The thing about the table, whether it's at home or here in the sanctuary or Greenwood, the thing about the table is that God makes the ordinary extraordinary. And we live in a time and a world desperate for the extraordinary love and grace of God. So what could be more appropriate than building our table bigger? God has given so much to us as a church, and there is much that we can share with our community and our world. We're already making such an impact through our missions and ministries, Love Thy Neighbor, Alpha House, Kenya and Costa Rica, through our children's small groups and youth group and adult faith formation classes, our Justice League, the COVID-19 fund, the assistance we give to individuals, our music program, chancel choir, bell choirs, and children's choirs, now with online worship and communion services, and of course, someday again, <laughs> with weddings and memorial services. All of this, and so much more happens because we individually recognize how much God has given us and we make the decision to give some portion back to God through the church. Right now, in the midst of the pandemic and a great deal of social upheaval, it's tempting to fall into what Stephen Covey calls a scarcity mindset. We're fearful, worn, and weary, and that can lead us to hold on tighter to what we have, to assume that there might not be enough to go around, to cut back in our giving just in case. Yet what we learn from the Apostle Paul is to give with abundance. 
The point is this, he says, the one who sows sparingly will reap sparingly, and the one who sows bountifully will reap bountifully. These words were written to the church in Corinth when Paul was encouraging them to give in order to maintain the home church in Jerusalem. He reminded them of the joy that comes with generosity and the spiritual growth that is nurtured with gratitude. Paul teaches giving as a spiritual discipline. Of course, Jesus did the same. Jesus spoke about money more than faith or prayer. He was passionate that his followers give to the poor, advocate for the oppressed, and welcome the stranger. Over and over, he taught that this is what God asks of us. And in fact, we will grow when we share the gifts God has given us with others. Just as Jesus' teachings about money reflected his kingdom values, I really believe our stewardship, what we give of ourselves and our finances to the church, is a reflection of who we are and what we believe, both as individuals and as a congregation. We give bountifully because we believe that our church offers love compassion and justice that our world so desperately needs. We give abundantly because we are a congregation that believes everyone belongs at the table and we're willing to build a bigger table to make that possible. As Henry Nouwen so eloquently puts it in his little book entitled A Spirituality of Fundraising, if we raise funds for the creation of a community of love, we are helping to build the kingdom. We are doing exactly what we are supposed to be doing as Christians. With the gifts that we give, we at First United Methodist Church of Ann Arbor are creating a community of love. We are helping to build the kingdom. And as we move into the future, we will extend our reach, expand our table. We've all had a rough year. Not only are we weary, but there's still so much uncertainty. We feel as though we have very little that we can actually do in the face of COVID-19. It's easy to feel defeated or paralyzed when we're isolated from each other from our families, and from our church home. But rather than focusing on what is frightening us, paralyzing or limiting us, I'm inviting you today to focus on hope, to live in hope. Let's use this time when we're out of our buildings to plan and prepare so that when we're back together, we can continue and expand on the good work we do at the table. Let us be God's Easter people who trust that God is still at work in the world, building a kingdom of justice and peace, love and compassion, and that our church has a vital role to play in it. In a few minutes, we'll have a prayer of dedication as we offer our pledges to God for the coming year. If you haven't pledged yet, I encourage you to do so when we hear again the beautiful words of Shirley Arena Murray's hymn, For Everyone Born, A Place at the Table. You can pledge online or you can fill out the pledge card you received in the mail. Thank you to those who have already pledged to those who will today and in the coming weeks. Thank you for taking a few minutes to make an investment in hope. Hope that God's kingdom will one day be fully realized. Hope that goodness and love will win out over fear and hate. Hope that this congregation will continue the work of the saints who've gone before us by seeking out those who need our help 
and those who long to be welcomed at God's table of grace. May it be so. Amen. For everyone born a place at the table. For everyone born clean water and bread. A shelter, a space, a safe place for growing. For everyone born a star. Justice and joy. I give thanks for all of you who have pledged to continue your financial support of First United Methodist Church or perhaps to begin giving to the church. Some of you have pledged online, others have sent in cards. No matter how you have pledged, will you join me for a prayer of dedication? Gracious God, with grateful hearts, we dedicate these pledges and gifts to you and to our church. They represent the results of our work, our lives, and our dreams. Help us to listen for your guidance as to how we use what is represented here for how we might build a bigger table, and for whatever you have for us to do next. Where it is possible, join our hands, feet, and hearts to these commitments to live out our desire to see that your work is accomplished in our community and around the world. Help us always to use wisdom, kindness, justice, mercy, joy, and love and to see you in each person we encounter. These, These commitments, commitments and gifts are filled with possibilities. possibilities. We, we share, share them, them with joy and grateful hearts. hearts. Amen. fortunate that early in March we had our spring soulful retreat and we got to see all the youth and spend time together with them and that was a wonderful experience and then by the end of the week following that everything closed down and schools were moved to online um, classes. So we had our first Zoom meeting on March 22nd and fortunately because we're networking with uh, Michigan Conference youth workers and Facebook groups of people who work with youth ministry uh, we've got lots of ideas that we've used uh, we've discovered games and activities that we can do over zoom and uh, even um, we still were able to do our youth worship service this year because of recordings that we had from past youth worship of music that we do and also um, photos and video that we took during that retreat of our skits and dramas that we always do on our youth worship Sunday. So um, another thing that we're able to do, um, even though we didn't go on our mission trip to Zeba, which is our mission site for middle schoolers up to the Upper Peninsula, uh, we were able to send a Vacation Bible School in a box to all those kids because we had their addresses and we got photos back from some of them and they really enjoyed it. So we were glad that we were able to continue that connection because this would have been the 25th anniversary of our Ziva mission trip. So we're looking forward to celebrating that next summer, um, God willing. In the future, we're really excited to keep offering um, lots of different programs and because we had this time of sort of um, wiping the slate clean and starting from scratch, we feel like everything is fair game. There's so many great ideas out there of ways to continue to connect with the youth. 
and to make sure that we continue to support the needs of them and their families. So we look forward to their continued feedback about how this is working. And we're just so grateful that we can continue to serve uh, the youth of our church and their parents and siblings and be in community in the body of Christ for one another. I wanna say thank you to Wendy for giving us an opportunity to see what is happening with our youth ministries. All month, we've been able to see just different ministries and how they're being impacted by your contributions and how they, in turn, are impacting our community. I want to say thank you for your giving, and I invite you, as you prepare for the next piece of music, to go ahead and to continue to give. If you're a first time giver, I wanna say thank you for making that commitment to help us. And for all of you long-term givers, I hope you know that these ministries and much more are being funded with your generosity. With that being said, let's go ahead and listen to this next piece of music. Let us gather in a time of prayer. Generous and giving God, we thank you for those times this week when we smiled and laughed, those times of friendship and joy, even when it's done virtually. 
We give thanks for those times when we were able to appreciate the beauty of nature, when we felt a peace in our hearts, when we pause to be grateful for the blessings that you have given us. For all of these and for so much more, we say thank you. Lord, we lift up our country and its leaders. Help them to guide us on paths of unity, care, and mercy. We pray that egos and power plays will be set aside and that wisdom, vision, and collaboration will prevail. Give our leaders guidance on how to protect us in this time of pandemic. We pray for our health care workers. They have labored long and hard providing care for those who have been impacted by the coronavirus. May they feel your presence and be restored and re-energized. Protect them as they work to give comfort and healing to ever-increasing numbers of people in distress. Lord, for all those who are sick, suffering, lonely, or just in need of your presence, we ask that you alight on them with your healing presence, with your guidance, and with your peace. You know those in our minds and in our hearts, those on our prayer lists, but we know you are not limited in your ability to know even those we are not aware of. We trust in your all-encompassing love to reach all who need you. God, we lift up our church. We want Ann Arbor First to continue to be a strong and vital church in our community. We want to be used by you to make a difference in the lives of others. Help us to show your love to others through our worship, our programs, through our ministries, and most of all, through our lives and the examples we set. This we pray. Lord, for the confidence and joy and hope we have, we give you thanks and praise in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And all God's people said, Amen. Let us now continue our prayer time with the prayer that we all have in common. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. at the table, revising the roles, deciding the share, with wisdom and grace, dividing the power, 
for woman and man, a system that's fair. And God will delight when we are creators of justice and joy, compassion and peace. Yes, God will delight when we are creators of justice. Justice and joy For young and for old A place at the table A voice to be heard A part in the song The hands of a child In hands that are wrinkled For young and for old the right to belong and God will delight when we are creators of justice and joy compassion and peace yes God will delight when we are creators of justice justice and joy As you go now into this week of thanksgiving, may you enjoy the abundance of all that God has given you. May you feel the love of God and family and friends surround you. And may you know that this church is here for you now and for generations to come. Go in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Hi, I'm Beth Lipton, here to tell you about this year's holiday giving program. Yes, FUMC, there is a giving tree this year, but like most things in our lives, it's become virtual. However, the gifts themselves are very real. We've been asked to provide gifts for low-income students in the Bryant neighborhood, for two families living at Alpha House Family Homeless Shelter, and in addition this year, low-income students living in the Hikona neighborhood. There will be no Santa parties this year. The gifts that we provide will very likely be the only Christmas for these children. Our virtual tree is online, set up with Sign Up Genius. You can access it through links in the latest news section on the church website or on the church Facebook page. This is what it looks like. You can scroll down, see the list of all the gifts requested, choose one with the red button. When you've made your choices, click the green button to submit, fill in the information, click, and you're done. All this clicking will get you an email reminder that includes the item, gift number, the child's name, and a description of the gift you've selected. There will be no contact drop-offs for gifts scheduled for three Sundays in the church parking lot from one until three on Sunday afternoon. They will start the Sunday after Thanksgiving and include December 6th. December 13th will be the last day. You will be able to drop off your gifts under the church portico on a table there, or we can take them safely from your trunk, no contact. We ask that you make your gifts unwrapped and that you include a note on each one with the number of the gift item and the child's name. If at all possible, please include a gift receipt, especially for clothes and shoes. A simpler and easier gift might be to buy a gift card. All of the older kids have asked only for gift cards. You can find them in the list of gifts on the virtual tree, select them. When you've done making your selections, go back to the beginning of the virtual tree site, look, find the paragraph that says, purchase a gift card, follow directions, click on the link, it will take you to the youth script site. You'll be able to purchase your card right then. We will buy the cards and deliver them. You're done. In addition, buying them through youth script benefits the students in our own youth programs. We have a great need this year for the $25 Meyer cards, gift cards to buy holiday meals for families. You can find these at the very end of the list of gifts. Click on that to choose it. Then you can go back to the beginning of the virtual tree. Look at the paragraph that says donate a holiday meal. Follow the directions. Click on the link. Buy that gift card through the youth script site as well. And you're done. All this clicking too much for you? You're welcome to donate. Make a monetary donation to the church website. At the beginning of the virtual tree, there's a link where you can do that. You are also more than welcome to send a check directly to the church. Just please put on the memo line of the check, giving tree. On behalf of all of the children who will benefit from your generous donations, thank you so much. And we wish you a blessed and joyous Christmas and a safe and peaceful new year. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.